Okay, here we go. Focus, speed. I am speed. Stay focus, speed. Faster than fast, quicker than quick. I am lightning. You are not ready for the sheer insanity of this build. Hello, my fellow sorcerers, and welcome to Hyperspeed Sorcerer. Using one of my favorite uniques, the Oculus and its random teleporting effect, with a bit of ball lightning blender to essentially randomly infinitely teleport like 10 times a second and everywhere you appear you delete every enemy in a huge area around you thanks to a pretty potent set of really awesome synergies. This thing is just nuts. Like, you're seeing it. There's not really many words I can say that do a better job of conveying just how utterly broken, but more importantly, ridiculously fun this experience and playstyle is. Now, I have done a kind of teleport bomb before, and it was one of my favorite builds I ever did. Sadly, though, it didn't use the Oculus because while it is a fun unique, it is admittedly, perhaps in most cases, a little bit anticlimactic. It certainly got added at a time where what Sorcerer needed wasn't something kind of silly and niche, but a serious power boost. But the thing is, now we have the serious power Power boost. Now we are just the best class with the best build in Season 2. We can incorporate something like the Oculus, turn its silliness into a massive advantage, and have uh, this unstoppable unstoppable combination crafted that kind of just automatically deletes dungeons like you sort of just go near a vague group of enemies start hammering spacebar while spamming ball lightning and arc lash and everyone just kind of melts it's hilarious how auto disintegrate this actually is. You've got your regular teleport to put you back on a target should you ever get too far astray. And fear not when it comes to bosses or single target, you've still got a ball lightning core here, so you're still absolutely melting them and you don't have to randomly teleport around the boss room. You can just sit on them and uh, do uh, the thing that it does so well. So you're not really giving up much there to gain uh, this upside of, well, the fastest build ever in Diablo. You literally do not run out of teleports because every time you teleport, you reset the cooldown on your teleport. As in, the dodge patch, your regular teleport still has a really low cooldown too, so you can, as I say, regularly correct course, which kind of smooths out the randomness here. And because of how ball lightning works, just circling around you and just killing everything near you, we don't have to worry about aiming or anything, we just appear and delete, appear and delete, appear and delete, appear and delete. When you look at this through the lens of just the map, it's like the player icon is an eraser, and whenever it touches a red dot, it gets blinked out of existence, and it's just a matter of time until everything, well, gets that treatment. It's so glorious in so many ways. Now, of course, this isn't better air quotes than just the min-max perfect level 100 ball lightning that I uh, presented two, three days ago. But that, you know, it's the boring, straightforward way. This is almost as much damage, it's much faster, at least clearing dungeons, and, well, it's just so entertaining. And while sometimes you might accidentally teleport too close to the sun and end up somewhere you don't want to be, 
Well, you spend most of your time completely untouchable because you don't stand next to an enemy long enough for them to attack you ever, but anyone you are next to is permanently stunned and then they're dead half a second later. So it's actually an incredibly survivable build outside of the very rare bad uh, luck times you will pop up in the middle of an explosion with not quite the health to take it, but hey, I think that's a price we're all willing to pay for this absurdity. Let's get into it then. Skill tree initializing in three, two, one. <laughs> You know, that's one of those things where as soon as I start saying it, I'm like, this is much lamer than it sounded in my head, but I'm committed now. Beginning then with just the one rank in Eyeclash, as this build only needs the ability to literally cast it, not to gain any damage from it, so we'll save four points by not maxing it out, but we do want to take it to Flickering, just to start stacking up the movement speed to translate into both damage and, well, literally movement speed, because we can't use our dodge to move between enemies, because it will randomly teleport us, we do want to get a little bit of a hook salon with just our legs. One rank in to Firebolt as it will form our first enchantment slot as we will be going full devouring blaze and the fire paragon board and all of that crits lovely damageness. Then over to the cause we get the usual uh, three in potent warning to not get blown up by some random elemental shenanigans and then we get this five in charged bolts. This will make the second of our enchantment slots, and the reason being, well, it just synergizes too well with what we're doing. We are spam teleporting round the entire dungeon on top of every enemy, and in the process, stunning them with Raiment of the Infinite. So when we stun them all, at least half of them, or just under, will release three charged bolts. This will then trigger the extra little explosion from enhanced charge bolts, and essentially just add a lot of extra burst damage on top of the ball lightning for free. You will release so many of these, and it beats all the other possible second enchantment slot options, and it's a little bit different, so that's nice too. And and then we want to make it do more damage to stunned enemies because it will essentially only be hitting stunned enemies. This is really, really good here. Over to your defensives where we get the flame shield, but we don't get any of the upgrades because it's not really needed, but we do want to be able to cast it just in case of emergency. Teleport, of course, and take it to shimmering, and this is essentially permanently up, of course, in a Oculus build, and, well, we want to slow a cooldown on our actual teleport so we can correct course as often as possible and sort of direct the randomness. Pile into glass cannon because in this, again, you just don't get hit 99% of the time, so this is just a free huge damage increase. One rank of elemental achievement just so the reset can happen. We hope it happens to uh, teleport for even more teleportness. And then uh, lastly, your frost nova, which you want to take down to shimmering just so you can spam ball lightning even more because we don't need help with vulnerable. Though, technically, these two points you could save if you really wanted them to be somewhere else. Over to Conjuration, then, we get the extra lucky hit, just so, well, our lucky hits happen more often, and uh, then we get the usual duo defensive of protection, giving us a barrier when we use our cooldowns, of which we are literally spamming, and then mana shield, so this permanent 21% damage reduction is active. Then we go over to mana and get your devouring blaze for that extra hard critting and then five into ball lightning as well the star of every sorcerer show essentially and where the damage is coming from alongside enhanced which just makes it nuclear in season of attack speed and then wizards to start producing crackling energy all over the place this is actually really extra important in this and we'll get to why in a moment then uh, your static discharge just to get to invigorating conduit, so our crackling energy gives us mana. More mana, more ball lightning, more death. 
over to your ultimate, of course, get unstable currents, which works especially extra well with the spam teleports, and then prime for the attack speed and uh, the crackling energy pulsing faster, so even more cooldown reduction, as, yes, we get the overflowing energy key passive. Then, uh, lastly, just one in course in currents, just to get to the three electrocution, just to, again, uh, make it less and less likely that you will actually take any damage in those unlucky moments when you happen to arrive in a bad situation from your random teleporting. So that is our setup then. How does it all actually pan out? Well, you've got your bars. They should be set up similar to this. And, well, what we're going to be doing is casting ball lightning and arc lashing. Casting ball lightning and arc lashing, all right? That's all you want to be doing. Left and right mouse click, as I have it, just spamming them, both and both. And then we add to that spamming spacebar so we randomly teleport around the place while spamming our clash and ball lightning you see how this happens we kind of just nearly never run out of teleports no matter what is happening and on and on and on it goes spam those two spam spacebar watch the dungeon kind of complete itself while you enjoy the carnage that is the core of everything here you've got your frost nova if you want uh, the extra lockdown, you've got your flame shield if you're in an emergency situation, and you've got your own teleport to kind of direct the randomness, as I say. And then, unstable currents. This is even better here than it normally is, because when unstable currents is on, the random teleporting does a random shock skill. Which, yes, also then resets the cooldown of our random teleporting even more for reasons that the gear will reveal. So when Unstable Currents is on, for those 10 seconds, we can teleport like 20 times in a second by just hammering spacebar as hard as you can, and it really takes this into warp drive. It's so, so good. Let's actually look at gear then, because, yeah, it really is that simple to play. Obviously, if there's, like, one elite left on screen, everything else is dead. Don't just keep randomly teleporting and trying to end up on top of him. Just manually go over or teleport over yourself to finish them off. And with bosses, yep, just camp on their face. That's all well and good. But for the rest of the time, yeah, just kind of go for it. And unstable currents. Here we go. And... <laughs> Just so, so, so silly. Oh, I love it. My God. Gear then, of course, is everything when it comes to this playstyle, and none of it could happen without Ocular. So this gives you the teleport enchantment for free. That is its unique effect, and that is why we have it. The ranks of teleport are nice, but not a huge deal. We're not really caring about damage coming from teleport, and the cooldown reduction gets very minor with that many ranks. The evade charges, however, and the attacks reduce evade's cooldown are what's important. So, your evade has a decent cooldown as it currently stands. You see, that's taken a while to come back from 3 to 4. However, if I then immediately start attacking afterwards, you see how quickly it speeds up. And that's thanks to that attacks reduce the evade at cooldown. It makes a huge effect coupled with doubling up on the effect when it comes to your boots as you require boots that have attacks reduce evades cooldown. So it means every time we attack, i.e. every time unstable current summons a random shock skill, every time we swipe, every time we summon a ball lightning, this goes down by 2.4 seconds. Which is why we can essentially endlessly teleport, because you're reducing the cooldown faster than you can randomly teleport around the place. It is lovely. So, yeah, gems real quick. Put your extra crit damage to vulnerable in your weapons, your health in your armor, and your armor in your jewelry, and get yourself that 
Oculus. It's what powers it all. Then we want aspects wise. Get yourself conceited. We always have a barrier on because, well, when you randomly teleport, it counts as casting teleport, so we get a barrier, so it really is always on. So this is huge. On uh, your boots, you want to have shared misery. That way, your stuns are being spread throughout the entire screen. So even if you don't randomly teleport on top of a couple enemies, they still will get stunned. And because they have now got stunned, they will trigger the charge bolts enchantment, which might just cause them to die without you ever needing to go near them. That is another reason that this is such a good choice for the second enchantment for this build. Then uh, we want ourselves accelerating. The uh, crit hits from the charged bolts from your enchantment do trigger this, which means this is up permanently and more attack speed is more ball lightning damage, and that is brilliant. On your helmet, you want your usual ever living. Take your reduced damage from both vulnerable and crowd controlled, which everyone always will be. If you're doing easier your level content, then uh, put on God Slayer Crown. You'll do more damage and and you won't need the extra survivability. For your last three then, we want gravitational. Without this, well, ball lightning just doesn't work. Get it orbiting around you and doing more damage on top of it. Then elementalist. Now this is where you have a choice. You can either take elementalist, so your ball lightnings will have much higher crit chance as most of the time you will have full mana, but you can also, if you want to focus more on the charged bolt side of things, get the new or well swapped with the unique piercing static aspect so your charged bolts pierce through the enemies so they will spread out from the grouping stun spawns of them and hit more and more times. This is also really good but I've lent Elementalist because I think it's purely a little bit more damage, but it really depends on how well you manage your mana, but one of these two and you will be good. Lastly, on your neck then, you want Disobedience so you don't get folded by any stray attack that does manage to clip you while you're zipping about the place. So how do you end up on constant mana? So we can cast three ball lightnings on our usual tank. Well, of course, we have Tybalt's Will, so when we teleport, we get 50 mana back, that's great, but the main deal is uh, the crackling energy that is summoned. We uh, just produce it everywhere, and because we are randomly teleporting, you will so often just randomly teleport on top of a huge cluster of crackling energy, which will surge fill your mana back up, letting you cast more ball lightnings. That is really the main engine that lets you keep casting them and keep casting them above 100 mana. So, talking of Tibalt's Will, let's do our uniques. Tibalt's Will. Get this on, enjoy the mana, enjoy the extra damage. This is always active and it is fantastic. Then, Raiment of the Infinite, which is required for this all to work. You want those random teleports to group and stun people, otherwise you're kind of not really achieving too much with them, so make sure you do have this. And that's actually it. Obviously, Oculus as we saw, but this is a fairly more aspect-heavy than unique-heavy build. When you are looking at your affixes then, you want critical strike chance, you want cooldown reduction, you want resource generation and chance to restore mana, you want attack speed, you want critical strike damage, lightning critical strike damage, ranks of glass cannon, ranks of ball lightning, and ranks of devouring blade. Then movement speed, vulnerable damage, lucky hit chance, and your generic attack options like intelligence damage to close enemies, stunned enemies, etc. And defensively, make sure you get the percent total armor on your helmet. So we move over to Vampiric Powers, where we still have Anticipation, as with Unstable Currents up, this is a whole other level, so we want that to be as much as possible, and it basically ends up being most of the time. Then we want Prey on the Weak for the more damage to vulnerable enemies, and the Vampiric Curse equals vulnerable, which, yes, we combo with a Curse Touch, as you might expect, so everyone is always vulnerable all of the time. These two are just too strong together. As is Raven, for that constant 
massive, huge increase to your attack speed, which directly translates to both ball lightning attack speed and therefore damage, but also the literal speed at which you can pump out attacks between teleports, which means the speed that you can reduce the teleport cooldown after you have teleported. So this really is key. And then lastly, domination, because everyone is always going to be stunned, so this is a huge increase of damage to those stunned enemies. What remains then is our Paragon board. And for this build, well, start at your base and go up, getting the rare nodes left and right and all of the magic around them. As always, don't skimp on your resistance and your health. It comes in very, very handy. Then we go up to our first glyph slot where you want to shove Adept so our ball lightning is bigger to catch more people during our teleporting and doing as much damage as possible. Get it to level 15. Mine is level 14 at the moment, annoyingly, but when it is 15, that will actually buff it, and I will grab that one too, and that will buff it even more. Head up, get your rare nodes and the magics that are relevant, and then we get into our first board, which remains Enchantment Master. Now here we get the trifecta of Elemental Balance, Elementalist, and Ruinous. These three are such a huge increase to any sorcerer builds damage that they essentially are mandatory in any sorcerer build along with the associated magic nodes around them get your all element resist too and then in this glyph slot we want reinforced the bonus to these rare nodes is huge it essentially makes them just an extra rare node of each and then the damage reduction in our permanent barrier can not be understated in its effectiveness then over to the right to our next board, which is our burning board, Burning Instinct, which is one of the reasons we use the Firebolt Enchant. Head straight down and get yourself Cinders and the extra damage to burning enemies. Get yourself Smoldering Embers and the damage reduction from burning enemies. And here you want Destruction for that colossal amount of crit damage. Get it to at least level 15, get every bit of dexterity around it and enjoy the absurd results, while then stretching up here and getting kindling for even more damage to burning enemies. Then we want to go down into our next board, which is going to be your Static Surge, all about damage to stunned enemies, which as you can imagine, is exactly what we want in this build. Get over here on the left for more damage to stunned enemies, the extra maximum mana is nice too, for both ball lightning cast and the elementalist aspect, and then we go get the Glyph. Electro alongside Incapacitate are no-brainers, and in your Glyph slot you want to put Control. Everyone is always stunned, so this is just a huge increase. Get it level 15 once again, and grab all of the decks that you can to amp up its strength. Then head right, get the overwhelming node and the magic nodes around it, and then we can go into our final board. Is uh, Frigid Fate, or the Vulnerable Board. Immediately go down and get Oppressive and the magic nodes around it. Then we can go and unlock the Glyph slot, head straight up to get Weakness and the magic nodes around around it, and then you can get chilling just for the intelligence, but you don't really need the extra cold resist, so don't worry too much about that. Then you can go up here and get guarded for lots of lovely damage reduction, and then if you have any points left after that, the two main places to spend them are to go up here and get the extra armor and damage reduction from elites, then we want to go up and left here to get the extra resist to all elements, and then finally up to enchantment master just so you're charged by bolts have a higher chance to be spawned out of stunned enemies. Then in this very, very last glyph slot, you will want to put yourself charged as you will constantly be picking up the crackling energy and 15% free damage is really, really good. You can also put exploit if you prefer that to amp up your vulnerable damage. So, that is that then. A super speed, super spam, endless teleport everywhere, ball, lightning, blender, oculus, shenanigans that really, I hope, has put a smile on your day. And even if you're not going to switch to yourself, I would like to believe that you are at least happy to see it in action and see just how effective and fun it is. It really is a good time to be a sorcerer. But now then, like you've enjoyed this, subscribe and hit the bell for more consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below. And until we meet again, a good...
Why? Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye <laughs>